Hey, good morning, everybody. You are back with the crew. It's so good to have you guys. This is uh, becoming a regular event. I do two shows a week, so hopefully that's enough content for you guys. I have a really uh, great show today, I hope. I hope you get something from it. Today I'm going to talk about why people are picking sides. It, it doesn't make sense to me. Are, are you a Bitcoin guy? Are you an XRP guy, Alan? You can't be both. You know, this is a team event, you know. You better, better pick a side, Alan. Well, I'm going to try and explain why I think that battle is sort of the wrong battle or the wrong way to be looking at it, or maybe not the best way to look at it. Let's put it like that. First of all, let's talk about Bitcoin. Bitcoin started off and caught everybody by surprise and you can say who's behind it or whatever who Satoshi may or may not be we don't really know yet I'm sure it'll come out one day but about 2018 I believe it was somewhere right in there there was a big battle going on about they were trying to speed Bitcoin up they were trying to make larger blocks accelerate its block size okay to do that meant that you would essentially have to hard fork the chain yet again that's not what anybody wanted to do who actually believed in bitcoin but the nefarious people if you will wanted to do that some deep pocket people who are you know connected to some very shall we say people who are used to controlling things wanted to obtain a way to backdoor Bitcoin okay they failed okay since the time of that failure right since that time they've slowly one by one joined on and I'm talking the likes of people like Jeremy I don't know if you know who Jeremy is from circle he was leading the whole charge and we're talking about people like BlackRock, right? Grayscale. These companies are massive. We're talking about New York Mellon. We're talking about, believe it or not, the Federal Reserve. These people were behind that. That tells me they were trying to break in. Either they found it to be too much trouble or they couldn't corrupt or there wasn't enough people to corrupt or they just didn't make it happen. So they decided, hmm, all right, we can live with that because Bitcoin's an asset. We'll call that digital gold. Isn't it interesting to you that Bitcoin and Ethereum got a blessing by all the powers that be? Think about that one for a minute. So, who didn't get a blessing? XRP. So let's backtrack a little bit in the XRP story and go all the way back to when I started. The first two or three years that I was in crypto, I was told XRP was the banker's coin. That's the evil cabal people. Boy, don't, don't get involved in that coin because they're the nefarious people that are gonna corrupt everything and they're gonna change it for the little man and they're gonna own us in the end. And that's, that was the narrative. That's what everybody thought. There was a lot of people that believed that and still to this day believe that about XRP. But since then, let's look at what's happened. Well, let's see, that hasn't occurred, right? Nope. In fact, who got thrown into the SEC court? Who, one of the shakiest deals I've ever seen in my lifetime was throw the com outgoing commissioner on the day he's leaving or the day before he leaves, he throws the uh, XRP into court. And then it's been what, a year and a half? which my wife got that right. She was like, oh, it'll be two years at least. I was like, no, it'll be over in six months. <laughs> yeah, well, it, she got that one right for sure. I don't get them all right. I, I can't get half of them right. So let's get back to the big picture. The big picture is this. Just like a casino, we have people that like to control things. Well, a technology comes along, along like crypto and it threatens the people who like to control money. These are big folks, right? That's a game they like to keep. It's sort of like the casino, right? 
The casino's not going to let you just bring a new game into the casino and that game is not good for the house. They would do that, right? So they're not trying to do that. What they're trying to do is gain control over something. They'll let a couple slide through and, you know, act like they don't really care, like Bitcoin and Ethereum. But they have to put the hammer down on XRP and I'm going to tell you why biggest reason why is because Mr. Brad Garlinghouse isn't part of their club. I think that's become pretty clear at this point. We don't know for sure. You don't really, everybody says, uh, it talks in such absolutes. But I'm pretty sure about that one because all the evidence points that direction. So let's get back to the war, if you will. The war is between Bitcoin and XRP. <laughs> no, no, follow the ball here now, people. That's not the war. The war is between Circle or the people who back USDC because stable coins, stable coins, not even CBDCs, is a competitor to XRP because, as we know, XRP is the tracks that all transactions should, in a good world, in a perfect world, if you will, or a happy world, should run on. It should take over the SWIFT system, and then some. And then it could create a more fair system in which we could all transact in globally. Bitcoin doesn't have that ability. Bitcoin is not that ability. So when I talk about the Lightning Network, I'm not talking about on a global scale. I'm talking about like with my video about El Salvador. I believe that that's gonna work for them and I believe it'll work for some smaller areas and some local government and within your own nation. Okay, so your battle is not with Bitcoin, Mr. XRP. Your battle is with new tether coin, many of these other coins. Why? Now let's get a little deeper into that. There's a little company called, you've probably heard of them, the Federal Reserve. They are not federal and they don't have any reserves, as we all know. The Federal Reserve is a company owned by private citizens that has never been audited. Odd that, but it's true. And yet we give them reign over the US dollar. Not to mention interest rates and many other factors. So why? is circle in bed with the Federal Reserve. Hmm. That's pretty interesting. So I just explained the enemy to you. Federal Reserve is not in bed with Bitcoin. Well, thus far that we know. So when you look at the people who run circle and other companies like BlackRock and these companies and and they badmouth your coin and they say that you're the problem, that means you're over the target. That means you're getting close. That means you're getting there. So why do they want XRP not to thrive? Control. Obvious. That's pretty obvious at this point. How will it all end? Well, stay tuned. Who knows, right? But I do think it's interesting that they haven't come out with any sort of legislation it's not even interesting, it's a fact. They don't wanna set the bar. Why don't they wanna set the bar? Because people like Brad Harlinghouse and people like the likes of Ripple, that's what they do. You find them, you show them the security, they'll find a way around it. You can't hit a, a, a target you can't see. The target's moving around. As soon as you create legislation, Everybody can work around it. As soon as you have a system to hack, you can hack it. But if there's no system to hack or rules to break, you can't break them. <laughs> Everything you do is subject to, oh, well, you were doing something wrong six months ago. Right? Okay. My point here is they already put up with Bitcoin. So what that would tell me is if you don't own any Bitcoin, 
you might want to say, do you believe in those kind of people? Do you think you want to be on their team? No, not really, you don't. But if you're just in cryptocurrency to change your life and make your life financially better, you might be on, want to at least throw a couple of bucks towards the winning team on the asset side of life. That's the asset side. They've said as much. It's digital gold. Will it fail? I know there's a million reasons out there where you are laughing and texting down below and telling me how I'm doing something. I'm missing a calculation of where Bitcoin's going to fall on its face tomorrow. Probably, except for how do you explain all the people that have hated for all these years, big time players, Jamie Dimon and all the rest of them, and Goldman Sachs, and New York Mellon, a 238 year old bank is supporting these things now. Those people aren't used to losing. They don't lose. They're not good at it. You know why they don't lose? Because they know who the winner is before the horse even leaves the starting gate. Just trust me on that one. Just uh, some thoughts that I thought I'd go over about that big debate that all of us have. And uh, stay tuned because there's more unfolding and it's coming our way. There's some big stuff going on, but remember people, your battle is not Bitcoin. Your battle is stable coins. And they don't want you playing in that field so far. But you and I know that the best horse in that race for all mankind is XRP of the two. Less corruption, more for the people. I hope you guys got something from that. I hope it cleared up something. And I hope some of you who maybe were blowing up my channel about, oh, he's just a Bitcoin guy, you know, okay. No, there's a reason for everything we choose and everything we learn, right? We're learning this together. I don't have any absolutes. I don't have any evidence. I don't have any proof. But you can take a look at logic and you can take a look at the players involved. And this fight is not about Bitcoin. XRP. Just my two cents, guys. Hope you guys got something from that. And uh, I put out two videos a week. I hope you guys enjoy them. All right. With that,